And our next guest is a hometown game. He's usually accustomed to sitting next to glamorous people like Tara Lipinski and Johnny Weir. <laughs> it's a little more drab today for Terry Gannon. Drab. Please to join us. No, it is. <laughs> it is. I must admit, you're right about that. They're, they're what I'm used to in figure skating. Yes. Terry, you were on the call this weekend. Were you surprised that Wyndham Clark didn't wobble, that he was as solid as he was in no circumstances? I, I wasn't surprised he didn't wobble. What we saw at, at the Wells Fargo, I was there for that one too. It's a big golf course, it's a big event, it's a designated event. He'd been through there um, with all the confidence that he showed here. I, I didn't think he would. I just thought maybe the McElroys or, or Ricky, if he, if he kept making putts on that final day, uh, would get it done. I thought Rory um, was going to get it done yesterday. That, that's really what I thought. I'm, I'm not alone. I understand that. Um, but, wow, how impressed are all of we with Wyndham Clark. And all the, you know, everybody here, too, members that I talk to here, friends in town, just learning about Wyndham Clark. And the more they saw, they're, they're, they're like, wow, this guy is a player already. Yeah, the story of, of him losing his mom 10 years ago resonated with a lot of people. And, and we Monday morning quarterback, you know, now he's a big star. Now the floodgates are going to go open up. You know, he's already won, as you mentioned, in Charlotte. Now he adds a major. Does he look like a player to stay? Oh, I in your think mind? so. Okay. I, I mean, the power that he has and, and then the finesse around some of those plays around the greens, the short game here down the stretch. And, and I know, to me, the biggest thing, the most impressive thing, and I guess it is a major, it's a U.S. Open, so it, it matters most, are the bounce backs. You know, the yeah. first three days especially, make a bogey, bounce right back with a birdie. I mean, that shows you not only a game, but a heart. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody who is not going to go away. Mm. What do you think Rory McIlroy takes away from yesterday? Another near miss in a major championship? Another slow Sunday? It's hard to get inside the head of Rory McIlroy right now because you cannot dismiss the world we're in at the moment. I think that comes into play, and Rory is certainly a thoughtful, well-read individual beyond what we see on the golf course. All we see of athletes are what they do on the court or the course or the field, and we can ask them a million questions about where your head is at, what, where are you today going into this final round. Even if they answer honestly, it's not the full answer. So he's been there. You know, I, I think... He was a little different this week. I think there was a kind of a, as you said, an edge to him. His demeanor was a little different, not talking as much. He was focused on just winning this week. I think he gets it done. I, I, I think it won't be long before he wins a major, closes it out. Very similar to St. Andrews last year, you know, and he brought it up, what he, what he did yesterday at a major, and that should get it done. Um, it hasn't recently. How tough is it, do you think, for, for an athlete like Rory, who is so bright, who's so thoughtful and caring to be that killer that is sometimes expected of the greats in the game. It goes throughout all sports. I mean, you know, I played with basketball players who just were not self-aware, and, and that's a compliment. Like, they, <laughs> they, they think they're the greatest thing ever. They, they, they think they're the All-American, not um, from my day, Ralph Sampson or Michael Jordan, who you're playing against, and they're oblivious to really where they should fit in. And they go out and they score 20 points and have 15 rebounds. I think certain, certainly golfers are like that. When you're not, I think it's a greater challenge then to become that for four days at a major championship or one day, that final day. But obviously Rory has mm -hmm. all the success he's had. Just hasn't happened lately. Mm. Do you think the course held up? Because there was a lot of pearl clutching going on on Thursday when we saw 262s out there, this notion that this is not US Open golf. It's going to play too easy. In the fullness of the four days, do you think the course acquitted itself? The lead was at eight under on day one. It was at 10 under to win it. What's, yeah. what's the problem here? I, I mean, you're right. And so much of that was the marine layer. I know that it became a drinking game at home every time we said marine layer, and maybe it <laughs> continues today. I don't know. But it, that was the whole story on day one. It never lifted, and that rarely happens here. Day two, it lifted halfway through. We had, I woke up on Saturday and went, blue skies, yeah. sunshine. Not just because it's supposed to look like this in L.A. It's supposed to play like this in L.A. And then as soon as the leaders teed off yesterday, we had that. I, I think that's the whole story in terms of day one in the 62s, um, even more than the setup. When you look at, at how things played out, and it's a trade-off you make with a golf course like this. You can't really get the spectators very close around the right. tee boxes. You can't get them to the greens because they're actually close to each other. It takes away that coliseum effect. Do you think that had an impact on the general 
boisterousness that we would expect of a major championship that just didn't seem to be there as much this week? I think it's the reality of it. Yeah, the layout of the golf. I think the golf course, I, I for one, love this golf course. I think it is a gem. I think um, it is, it, you know, top 10, whatever on your list. But in terms of getting people around, spectators around the areas where you want to hear a lot of noise, sure. Um, I thought it was a great scene at 18 with the last pairing yesterday, everybody coming up. Once they got it under control, um, it was spectacular. And that's what I'll take away, that memory yesterday in the sunshine, Wyndham Clark closing it out, great putt, lag putt at 18 with all the spectators right there, and that's the setting you want. But sure, it's the, that's the reality of it, I think, the, the layout here. I'm from here. Yeah. You live here. What is the Los Angeles Country Club? Where does it fit? in the golf landscape in the city of angels it's revered but it, it's been private i mean mm -hmm. if you've got friends who are members you've had a chance to play it not everybody has obviously and it's it's a wide landscape as you know golf wise uh from wilshire country club to bel-air to riviera to la but then you've got the public golf courses too right. which so many of my friends play at griffith park um great great layouts but this is one that you felt uh, it, it was special to get beyond the gate mm. and, and come have a chance to play. And now the world has seen it, yeah. which, which is really cool for L.A. You've been around a lot of sporting events, Terry, where you know oftentimes that if the big name in contention doesn't leave with the trophy, it's often remembered for who didn't win rather than who did win. Is this going to be a major that's remembered for Wyndham Clark standing up and winning it? Or do you think in time it's going to continue to be known as the one that Ricky didn't win, that Rory didn't win, that Scotty didn't win? I think in part it'll be Ricky just because it was the return of Ricky to major championship golf and holding the lead throughout. But, no, I, I, I think Wyndham Clark will be the memory from this week. It'll be LACC, it'll be Los Angeles for the first time in 75 years, and I think it'll be Wyndham Clark not going away even when he had a bobble here, a bobble there, a bogey down the stretch, comes right back with a great shot to win it in the sunshine, eventually. Mm -hmm. It's great working with you this week, and yeah, I know man. we've kept you from your morning hike at Griffith Park, so. I'm going to Griffith right now. <laughs> we'll so, uh, get to it, Terry. In the car, so, Thanks so uh, much, we'll buddy.